so i think you already seeing my screen <coughs> right am I, my screen is visible right yes sir yeah yeah so like let's introduce uh, like if you are not aware i think most of you are already aware of open source and what is it open source software but uh, still like we would like to start with this definition or i can say uh, introduction of what open source is so, so like basically any source or any code that is open open or i can say that is public publicly accessible anyone can see and modify it you can even make your own version of that code distribute that code and uh, like even you can keep it as closed like you can uh, copy that code and keep it as closed for your own project something let's say so open source has basically open for everyone you can do whatever you want with that but yeah but there are some uh, there are some rules uh, that uh, that needs to be followed as a contributor or any moderator or anything so that that i think james will be speaking more about it and uh, also more about open source is that it is decentralized it is better way to collaborate around like let's say you are sitting here we are all uh, like working on uh, open source and uh, few of people are in delhi few are in, in mumbai and few are in bangalore we we all can collaborate like it it, it will be a very much like community activity if we, we are working on a good project on open source so it is a good way as well to communicate or you can collaborate between community and uh, like do peer re uh, peer reviews and learn from each other uh, open source codes are basically cheaper because it is free freely, freely available and more flexible that uh, you can use let's say if there is an open source project that uh, works on webrtc and webrtc that is a technology that is open for everyone so you can use this webrtc to create zoom uh, application create a google meet application or your version of this uh, google meet application right so it is flexible you can use in in whatever um, use case you want also like there is no pro uh, property like foundation uh, 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 like it is not like if uh, you know, if somebody has created that uh, open source project then only he will be able to do anything it is totally dependent on the community so a uh, uh, number of people all together uh, work on a open source project and then try to build something that will help people or that will help uh, any developer do the uh, do something good and i think that is that is enough about open source so why do we contribute in open source before that i think uh, let's uh, ask people that uh, like uh, like are you getting all the points can can i say uh, get yes or no yes. okay okay thanks a lot guys thank you <clears throat> so yeah so uh, vapo can you tell about why do we contribute to open source so basically uh, like there are software that you can build build alone right yeah and like in normal apps but there are things that requires thousands of people right thousands so that will be more than enough yeah correct <laughs> yeah yeah so basically yeah uh, let's say if if you are if you are new to programming if you are new to projects and you want to learn you want to learn some good uh, practices some best practices of code you want to learn from the very experienced pe people who have already been working from here so it is a, be a best way to start in you uh, start contributing to some projects that are live that are open for anyone to work on also the second thing is that you build a community by working together so let's say if there is a project like like uh, James was saying about webpack he was working on and uh, like uh, maven cli so what was there so if there is a community that is, that is already working together so if you can also get some help some peer review some 
uh, some advices for bit uh, for uh, for jobs as well for for your own code as well how you can make yourself better how you can write a blog you get a lot of uh, inspiration and a uh, lot of advices and suggestions from a community like we also like in in uh, telegram i think a few of us always talk to each other and we try to get something from each other someone shares the resources someone shares some ideas someone shares the project they are working on to collaborate so this is how community is work and uh, the bonding is also one thing that we get as an add on in open source the third thing is that we get exposure exposure to work in like various uh, technologies let's say there are python uh, uh, python projects there are javascript projects there are uh, like java projects that are open source and golang project they are open source you can uh, you can have a really good exposure working on this project while you are uh, while you are working on some other projects in your uh, company or in your uh, college project so you will get a huge of exposure once you get into here you there is no boundaries you can do whatever you want you was one of any better thing it is totally over you the the fourth thing is respect that you get from people if you if you say that yeah you you are working in open source pro projects or technologies or uh, open source uh, software you are a contributor then obvious thing is that you get respect from people around you people if, even if uh, like there are uh, like you can see right uh, even if as somebody is a technical architect level he is very much experienced but still he will respect a peer, he will respect a peer who is working on open source because he is working for the wellness of society he is not working for just the money so there comes a lot of respect and satisfaction this is this satisfaction comes by uh, contributing let's say if you are contributing to something and uh, some error is there in some open source project you uh, you found that uh, error and then you found a fix you found a, a, like how to solve that bug and you contributed there and your contribution got merged right then the satisfaction that comes it is the same like it is a very similar satisfaction that you get when you get a blue tick on your hacker rank or a code chef so that satisfaction is like you can compare this with the same because few of the people are not very much in competitive coding but they are good in development and they are good in com like open source like james is very good in Uh, James is very good in uh, like uh, open source contributions and uh, projects, but he is not doing competitive programming, right? So there are various factors like uh, whatever makes you satisfied with things uh, makes you happier, right? And the uh, last thing, uh, it is not last. Like uh, the one more point is good recognition, develop a portfolio for jobs. Yeah, if you are applying for job and you have already worked on some open source projects, and that is uh, that will add a lot of value. to your uh, to your um, resume and portfolio for example like people who have worked in gsoft uh, yeah yeah sorry got out i didn't saw your message yeah like i can share recorded i think recording is on already so i will share the recorded session if you have something mm -hmm. urgent uh, you can uh, like check that recorded version but i think this is more of a workshop not a session so like after 5, five to 10 minutes of discussion what open source is and how we can get into or start it and we will yeah yeah correct correct uh, like we have telegram channel as well gorav i will share the link i will share the link to you one second uh, so i think uh, uh, anyone can share the link to okay so what i was saying that we will after discussing few things we will uh, start uh, doing the workshop or kind of making pr to one open source repository that we created and shared already right so uh yeah i was saying that yeah you it helps a lot in getting a good portfolio in uh, creating a nice uh, resume and all this stuff because for job it is very important for you very so many time it is important for you to know the uh, know how the projects work how you can collaborate in teams your work ethics and all this stuff you obviously get from uh, working in open source projects and the other thing is like if you will see the trends last uh, last few uh, like uh, in last few years we have seen a trend Let, let's say if let's take an example of the best uh, like company that you want to work in let's take an example of microsoft or let's take an example of uh, google so in in the last few years we have seen a trend of people getting more hired if they are from gsoft so if or if they are working in some open source co communities if they are working in some open source project so 
what i'm trying to say that if you have already worked as a gsoc if you have already worked as a, in in any open source uh, contributor then the chances for you to getting shortlisted are more uh, than anyone who doesn't have that much competency in their like their resume if you, both of you have the same resume and same let's say you are in the same college you are working in competitive programming if some uh, both of you uh, are in the in the same competitive programming league and you have some extra value adding to your profile that is open so then obvious is that you are going to get shortlisted first for anything any opportunity that means yes you must have correct correct sweta for the working in the open source you must be ninja in programming uh, <laughs> Whenever you are asking question from me, you tell you you tell na right? this thing. <laughs> no, no, that was a question someone posted. So like you do not need to be a ninja. It is just like if you are eager to learn and if you like start with small patches to any organization, like people will be very like happy to have you in their organization and like they will help you learn. Like personally, I have five six people who I like. tell them ki read this read that and just contribute in this part so these people what they do is they do not know the stuff so they take more time to do the same thing which is fine so like there yeah. is no bound also right so they right. are learning at their own pace and like in some time they will become meaningful contributors correct like even uh, like if you are doing gsoc right if you are doing gsoc and you are picking up any project then there are two ways to pick up any project either you go by technology like whatever you have already learned let's say you are, you know python and you want to work on python in some open source projects and you will apply for gsoc for any project then you saw that you search for python projects and you got into some various like projects organization that are using python and then you pick that one right or apply to that one the other way round is what you are interested to learn in let's say you are interested to learn java to learn java and then what you did like you just filter out all the projects that are using java and apply to that you said that yeah i know the basics i can learn more let's start doing this and then while learning you are also contributing so there are there is no uh, like uh, there is nothing like being very much expert or something you start with a small pr or start with one contribution that could be anything fix error uh, like error fix or uh, like uh, um, spelling mistake fix anything and uh, yeah like and you are good to go like you it all starts with your first contribution that's it how to apply and find yeah atman we will talk about that let's uh, let's uh, like uh, talk about this first and how we can like apply for gsoc and everything we will have more conversation over that so, okay uh, how to contribute to mon okay okay like uh, like james there is a question how to contribute to mon i think you have worked on uh, javascript and mon as well uh, so uh, react and uh, like node so you you can answer this question yeah sure so i guess his uh, his question is regarding how to contribute to a project that is based on the mon stack i Correct. guess that is something he's asking for yeah so that is actually a generic question so uh, if you're working with the mon stack i uh, what i would say is that just try to try to kick start with a couple of projects and later on you shall you shall get you shall uh, get to contribute to a project on the go so the very first thing is actually just kick start just start building couple of projects and yeah so that's how you do it and and on the go you uh, you, you go you get to contribute to a couple of projects out there so uh, so you might be aware that we have a, a couple of npm packages or dependencies that you might be using and say uh, you might be de depending on a specific package and uh, and that uh, and by using that package you get to know that how things work under the hood and that's how thing works and it takes time and all that requires is patience and and uh, and yeah so yeah so the so the very first thing is to get started Yeah, so build a couple of projects and on the go you would be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, so one that's... more question is one more question is I think from you for you guys is to participate in GSOC. <laughs> hey guys, we are just taking few questions for few starting minutes. After that we will start. So I think we have one hour time.
so we will utilize that complete time let's have a good discussion with the mentors that are already available this resources that are already available and after that we will start like contributing right so like one question is to participate yeah. in gsoc you need to be enrolled in a college right yes yeah yeah exactly so these things that that's the you case. don't know like manual right yeah webo these things so they can read on manual right the gsoc no no yeah like but still yeah, exactly. like it is it is something that's maybe possible. let's say if they have not gone through the yeah. manual there so one interesting question mm -hmm. was okay. from uh, like uh, i missed it like shweta ganesh no no is the bhante chandra right so uh, if, if you contribute to uh, open source after you have passed out of the college right so what the recruiters and what the uh, company see is that you are working on something apart from your daily job or daily work so like they will be very happy to have you because you have a passion for coding so like if you are still out of college like it is uh, there is no right or wrong time to contribute to open source like we always welcome people and like you can start starting early though has its benefits like but you can do it after like college also cool yeah it, that was a good answer yeah uh, next question could be uh, uh, yeah we can contribute in open source not important it is not important the gsoc gsoc was mostly for students and if you are not a student then it is good if you even if you are contributing to any open source project it is good make sure that you are contributing like uh, if you are experienced then uh, your contribution contributions matter because you do not want to waste your time or you are not learning anymore you might be learning but you may be also trying to contribute to uh, the society or uh, community by whatever you have learned so like make sure that you are doing something good the other advantages that i think we have i uh, told already but uh, i think i will also add that uh, if you are uh, like uh, applying for any big uh, like company and you are applying for an experienced uh, as an experienced candidate or experienced level then it is a very must for you to have some extra projects as well working because it uh, like so many times people who have worked on open source or uh, some extra project uh, other than their current job it adds a lot of value okay so like i think it is uh, fine most of the questions are already answered if there is more, more question where on how to uh, yeah so one last question like uh, here is and not last but for this specific topic that how to find pro organization and projects that are using c++ for beginners uh, so my answer for this will be like you think that c++ is like a beginner language but you think it is beginner because you started with it right and you just know the basics of c++ you don't even know template and like smart pointers and stuff so what if you really want to learn c++ and have interest in embedded you can just work in organization called as boost okay gnu and like uh, most linux sites all the free bsd there's lots of organization that are like uh, want c++ developers but good ones are not available for java uh, for java i know one that builds a game it is called terra solo okay and uh, one like uh, Yes, sir. I'm interested in backend development and cloud computing is there any scope of gsoc for me obviously man there is a lot of scope you like uh, even if there is no scope in uh, like if you are thinking of looking for a project that you want to work on and you are not working in gsoc but still you can go to the gsoc there is a lot of ideas like there are a lot of good project ideas you can see and start working on it like parallelly you don't need to be gsoc you have to just work on projects you don't have to be gsoc that is just extra thing say again okay uh, okay okay i will say that uh, like uh, there is no like requirement to be a gsoc or mentor or something even if you want to contribute to any open source projects or want to build a project you can just go to the gsoc they, they are a lot of good ideas 
you can pick ideas from there there are requirements available you can directly take uh, take the requirements even you can like contact the mentors and just try to get in just touch of them and say like we are working on this all together and if you want you can also like guide me mentors are happy to guide anyway because open source is for everyone right anyone wants to collaborate and contribute with you okay do we get paid do we get paid like web how this is a question and do we get paid for open source work uh, like i should not tell this uh, but if you do it correctly then <laughs> i think uh, we just raised a 21000 dollar funding from linux foundation so so 21000 dollars are approximately 21000 into you can say 65 Thirty, uh, fourteen lakhs. Uh, so what Weber wants to say is that yeah, you you get paid sometimes. Like when let's say you have some open source project and uh, that is something that is required for any company. Let's say Cisco working on something and they want to pick your open source project, acquire you, right? And then what will happen? That they will give you some money like to take the ownership of that project. maybe after uh, like after that point it will not be open for everyone maybe one part of this will be open while the other part or other version will be not open but that makes sense because anyway like you got uh, uh, some value over your work and now it is going to be like uh, used for a bit like for a huge audience as well so you get paid the other way to getting paid is sometimes when you uh, like contribute in open source project people also like uh, um, donate over there if they get donations they also distribute that donation into their contributors so there is another way to get uh, paid as well so like let's not think about getting paid first in open source if you are starting or beginning but yeah like at some uh, after some moment of time you start getting some values associated with it let's say you also get some monetary uh, like benefits how much do you do we have to start open source like for 14 hours udemy course yeah you can learn anything from like uh, you can start learning and start contributing like it starts with the first day there is no constraint for open source man okay yeah so i think uh, like uh, yeah what uh, how why to contribute okay what are the values associated with open source so values are peer review that i already told transparency let's say like whatever you are doing it is transparent to everyone you cannot cheat over anything because people are looking over you so that also uh, like associate that you will be doing a good code writing nice code it, at least you will take peer review before pushing anything or before pushing to the merge or merging anything so this these are few things that you should do reliability uh, and flexibility as i already told you lower cost yeah i'm like like if let's take an example of uh, java uh, java let's take an example of uh, golang okay golang is open source right it is open source and it has a good community working all together react native react is open source and there are good community working all together what happens here like if you want to learn react native if you want to contribute uh, to any project using react or react native there are uh, there, there is no cost associated with you can just uh, start for free you can just uh, start learning for free out there and there is uh, there is no hidden cost as well and uh, this also makes open source very much more uh, like uh, valuable no vendor lock in let's say facebook on uh, react but there is no let like, you can also create your own version of react by like just pulling out one branch or just by making a fork of it so there is no vendor lock open collaboration you can also contribute even if it is uh, from microsoft even if like flutter is from google even if like uh, uh, like java is from sun you can go and contribute to it like it is open for anyone like uh, talking about open jd jdbc okay what are the other benefits i think we have already discussed prerequisites today so is there any other question before we start uh, like uh, start developing like start doing something on git python is equal to open source or not yes python is open source 
uh, why we uh, why we be experienced in contributing for a proper time before thinking of this or can start now we will yeah you can start now there is no requirement of being experienced in contributing you just have to start now and uh, like a uh, small contribution helps you get a lot of confidence as well so even if you like why we are like targeting for hacktober fest is hacktober fest gives additional benefits right so like i think vavo can explain more about hacktober fest Uh, like whoever can you tell about what is hacktober fest uh, so hacktober fest is a program in which like uh, you get pay, uh, you get some perks or some like uh, you can say some goodies to contribute to open source that is a t-shirt that like i'm wearing <laughs> and, <laughs> i'm also uh, wearing <laughs> and uh, what else is there that's it and there are some of the like cool organization what they do is they need developers for uh, some of the work that remains for the quarter right so they open up issues for that and developers work for that and they like try to select some of the best talent for their teams right this is the internal working of actually like pratham no, you have to send five pull requests only five pull request this pull request should be like a high quality uh, high highly high quality pull request these are called and there is a, a rule book of written how it will be uh, like uh, considered as high quality five pull request correct yes it is five so it should be like it should not be just some like i think there are um, there are some open source project also that are decided by hacktober fest that not all the open source projects would be considered but if if even if you are contributing to the right open source projects and uh, then you should do some prop uh, you sh you should uh, really do some proper uh, like uh, rules to be followed to consider for your pr request to be considered as like a good pr request or valuable pr request and to be uh, do we organization from jisof also in october fest so we get both benefits so uh, no i think uh, jisok is not uh, like uh, doing have to uh, he is not participating uh, digital ocean is participating dev2 is participating uh, as a sponsor or as a presenter not uh, like G uh, google is not presenting that but uh, yeah i have some doubt as sir okay what is the doubt do anyone of uh, contributing android in kotlin do any no no I, like Baba or James, have you ever contributed to Android in Kotlin? I have contributed to Flutter. Not Kotlin, actually. No, no, no not Android. I mean, do we have? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have some of my? If you want, uh, like uh, Kotlin community is like building packages. Uh, so what they are doing is uh, like uh, earlier Android used to have packages for everything, right? so uh, a lot of work is being done in like uh, you can say porting java to kotlin so like there are lots of issues open on their uh, organization good yeah like uh, what are the rules of uh, hacktober fest can you tell on uh, one minute so that we can start james can also answer i think james uh, will answer this question Yeah, I guess Pratham asked for uh, projects based on vanilla JavaScript. JavaScript. Then is that the question? Yeah, he is working. He is asking if you have worked yeah, on vanilla. Yeah, so JavaScript. actually there are. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so in fact, if you search on GitHub, you can find a uh, uh, plenty of projects that is written in vanilla JavaScript. And yeah, so that's. pretty much uh, the matter of just searching on github and in fact i i do maintain a couple of projects and in case you are interested i can take you on board in case you are interested uh, i shall uh, just share those links over here so that in case you are interested uh let, let me just grab the link in, in the minute so i have just shared a link on the chat that's basically a, a cli tool built on top of javascript so in case you are interested i will be ha happy to help you uh, get on boarded to that project so feel free to check it out that's basically a cli tool built on top of javascript yep so yeah so 
that's pretty much it okay okay yeah so one more thing james we were talking about what is <laughs> october first like i think webo has already uh-huh. answered this but like he didn't say that how uh-huh. long it will go how you can start these things these things has to, uh, yeah. still missed so you can tell about those things yeah so <laughs> october first is actually a, a month long celebration of open source it is an initiative by digital ocean yeah so it's basically like you have to submit five pull requests i guess it's four this time i'm not sure about that it's four or five yeah so you're you're expected to submit five five or four four pull requests to a particular repository and not every repository qualifies for hacktober fest and and you need to check on that as well and yeah so basically you submit those pull requests and and also the the important thing is that it it there doesn't need to be merged and unless there unless it is it, it isn't being flagged as invalid your pull requests are valid and you're eligible for the swag so towards the end of the month uh, so that as i said before it's just and uh, well, one month of uh, the time the time period that is and yeah so uh, all, all that you have to do is submit uh, five or four pull requests within that time period and you would be eligible for the perk and that's basically a hacktober fest t-shirt Yep, and yeah, so like a well. T-shirt that Babo yep, and me and wearing, so we got yep, exactly. it last year, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, like we also get other goodies like uh, stickers. There were stickers that people like. Yeah, love so a lot. in fact, the cap I'm wearing right now is like is in fact the cap I'm wearing right now is actually a uh, is a swag swag that I received as part of contributing to open source. It is by it is for a project called Gatsby. Yeah, so yeah. That's what I'm yeah. doing. Right so, now. like, there are a lot yeah. of goodies that are associated. There are plenty of opportunities. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are plenty of opportunities. Okay, like, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, uh, prerequisites. I think. Uh, like, I think uh, all of you uh, have your laptops together. Like, uh, you have your laptops here, and uh, we can start doing one PR. I think James will take you through. Uh, like he will try to help you out with these things and i will also i am also here to do the same thing uh, we have created one github repository for the same where you can start at least and uh, i think the rules are already done like, so uh, yeah like uh, like have you all uh, already configured uh, installed github in your laptops can i get this answer okay okay i like more people if you all are have actually prepared then please say yes and then we can start doing things yeah you can you can uh, like do uh, with us parallelly git bash anything cli tool No, no, like Goro, uh, this, this is not like that. Actually, don't think it like spending time or daily basis. Just think if you want to contribute, then you only contribute. Don't think it like uh, there is some something that is associated. Swags are just uh, just a byproduct. You do more than just the swags. Actually, if you are uh, contributing to open source projects, you do more than just the swags. Let's a T-shirt comes uh, like it is of no cost, but if it is coming with that work. that has more cost like uh, the swags you know what are the difference right so so if you start contributing then you get uh, like obviously once you start getting recognized you will get swags and for hacktober fest it is very simple like you just have to make four prs for good high quality prs and you start you get a t-shirt like uh, you get on the month of uh, like uh, uh, march i think we got in the march got delivered to our on address so uh, it takes time 2 to 3 months to get delivered but yeah you will get that thing very soon <laughs> so like i think uh, james would you share your screen and take you uh, take us through the uh, the things right yeah sure i i will just share my screen right away so let me stop my sharing mm. okay I guess my screen is visible right now. Can you confirm on uh, if my screen is visible? Yeah, yeah, visible? I can see your screen is visible. Okay. So I just shared the GitHub repo link uh, on the chat. 
So I hope. Uh, so to all of the attendees, please visit the GitHub uh, repo. I've just posted it on the chat. I guess, guess it went up. Should I post it again? I guess people uh okay, so, like so just the very to, first thing hmm. yeah 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 so just um, just to yeah. make sure like what we are trying to do here we will talk about how we can contribute to any specific project if you are seeing it let's say we have created a specific open source project it is open source because it is public for us now let's not consider it a high quality project it is just for a practice so if we have created this project just for your practice so it is uh, like in this project you can start uh, do, co collaborating and start contributing using some prs you just have to copy this code or that is called clone you you just have to clone this code after forking and then start contributing uh, and making prs and then we will say that yeah this is how it is done uh, so this is what uh, like trying james trying to achieve right here so if you want to do this you can stay here few a few people are leaving maybe because they don't have the prerequisites already done so if you have already the prerequisites done i think you have a really good mentors to go through it and uh, like they will also guide you through where you to find good open source projects and where to start contributing right away next in the next uh, next month on the october like in the yeah Yeah, sounds great. Uh, okay, so the very first thing that you need to do is to uh, fork this repo over here, as you can see on the screen. So please go ahead and fork this repo over here so that uh, you get a copy of this repo uh, on your profile. So that's for uh, the very first thing to do. Please go ahead and click over this fork button over here and just click on your profile and that would create a copy for you. So that's what the very first thing to do. Yeah, same. A couple of folks are over here. Okay. Mm. So uh, what we're gonna do is pretty simple. Uh, so in case you notice, we have a folder named contributors and a file name readme over here. So you can either clone this repository to your local machine or just edit this file from the web UI. That, that is up to you. Uh, okay, let me just show you how to clone the repo. Just delete the existing one. Okay, so just uh, come to a path on your terminal and type in git clone and and the just copied GitHub repo URL. I'm gonna paste it and that's how you clone a repo to your local machine. I hope you might be familiar with this. And yeah, and just na just na navigate to that particular folder. And now you'll be having the exact same files as you can see over here. So here we have a contributors folder as well as a readme.mt file, a markdown file. And we just got the exact same folder hierarchy over here. So can you confirm uh, if that there is any sort of doubts till this step? I hope you were able to follow. OK, seems great. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess people are asking to repeat it again. So all you have to do is just, uh, just come to this GitHub repo URL over here and just tap this fork button and that, that would just create a copy copy for you. And yeah, so just click this fork button and 
you will be having a copy of it. And once you fork this repo, just grab the URL uh, of your forked repo and come to your terminal and just navigate to a path and just type in git clone and, and that particular URL and you would be receiving the exact same set of files on your local machine. Uh, I guess that makes it a bit better. So in case you have any doubts with that, please feel free to ask. Okay, so I guess you would be having this repo on your local machine by now. Okay, great. So please make sure that you're not cloning uh, this repo over here, or you have to clone your forked copy. And that, that would be github.com slash your username slash your post PR. And note this put this URL. I hope you got what I said. So you're supposed to clone your forked copy and not this particular repo. So once you click fork, that everything will be fine. Okay, I guess we're able to unfollow. Okay. Uh, yeah, so once that is being done, uh, uh, as, as for there is a contrast over here. And in case you- So like, uh, one second, uh, let's James, uh, there are some questions. So Priyam is saying- Yeah, asking, yeah. What will happen if I clone your copy? So Priyam, mm -hmm. what will happen that you are not the contributor in this specific project right now, right? So if you are not contributor means that you are not the member right now. You have not given access to access this specific repository. That means that if you will clone also, it will get cloned to your own uh, like device, but you won't be able to push anything because you are not a contributor. So it will say that you have access denied. So that is the reason when you fork it, you make a copy of the same project in your own deposit in your own GitHub, basically, right? So if you so you will see that URLs will also change. URL will be the project name along with your own username. So it will be GitHub.com, your username, and then the project URL, project name, basically. So that means that it is your own project now. That is your own version of project. And you can do anything you want. You can, you can even modify it for your own purpose. But that that's the thing. Like it will be totally uh, your uh, like your own. And if you want to make some changes and push it to this specific project, that is the let's say uh, this your first PR from Love to Build is the open source project, and you want to contribute into that from your own copy. Then you need to make a PR to this. That's that's how it works. Does it answer my question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Your question. Yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess we have one more question. It says done in CMT where my files are saved in my computer. Uh, can you please cl clarify that question? Uh, it says done in my CMT where my files are saved in my computer. Yeah, sure, sure. You need, be great you if need you could to. Do ls for listing out all the uh, all the files into that specific repository. Then then you need to change the directory to a specific repo. So there is uh, the way. Let's say if you want to go through it, just do cd into that specific directory. Then only you will be able to see. Yeah, that's what I just showed you right now. Uh, so before. Uh... I just cloned that particular repository and in my in a particular path in my terminal. And what I did was uh, just navigated to that particular folder, and that's how I, I got access to that particular files. Uh, your files here. Okay. okay and we have all those files. All. Okay. Yeah, we have received all, already a good request over here. Okay. Yep. And. Once you have those files on your local machine, uh, someone was speaking. Okay. Yeah, so once you have this, just well, what you're supposed to do is just create uh, a file in the contributors folder. So just navigate to that particular folder, says for contributors, cd into contributors and just create a file named after your GitHub username so that it becomes unique. Uh, so I already have a file over here with my name. So what you're supposed to do is to just create a file that goes by your GitHub username. 
so okay, like, you know, once that is done like, let me i let have me, i will ask you yeah uh, james so let me also yeah, share sure. like, i yeah. have one yeah, more sure. repository from yeah. that repository sure. i will show them how the fox will create a new one okay yeah that would be great yeah 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 so please go ahead Hello. Yeah, your screen is visible. Oh. You see audible? Yes, sorry, yeah. I I was on mute. So I think uh, you can see right. Uh, like I clicked on fork, and now it is forking that repository to my this account. Okay. So it is now you can see here right on the URL. The URL has been changed to my username. Oh, hyphen Bharatiya, and your first year. That means it is my repository now, and uh, and you can see it is also saying that fork from this specific repository, this open source repository. So this, I think this will uh, help you get all these confusions and confusions done. And from here, right now, you can start contributing. Let's say in this contributors, uh, you will go, you will create a file. So here you can see, right? Create a new file. And here you can write anything. Let's say, uh, hi, I am home. Let's do my. Yes. Oh, sorry. What happened? Sorry. So I need to rename it uh, with my own name. It, it will make sense. Txt file. Let's say I'm creating. Let's do magic. So you can see, right? I have written here, and it is saying create omharati.txt. I will keep it as a default, and then I will commit this new file. So it says that it has been created, right? It has been created, but uh, but uh, now see, now see, in my repository, when I open this contributors folder, it is showing two folders, right? Two files. One is James George, uh, 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 and the second is Om Bharatiya. But if I will go to this specific one, that is open, that is the actual repository, it doesn't have that. I will show you in this contributors. You will see that this is only having James file because it is already created. He is the contributor. I am not the contributor or actual contributor to that. Like I am not the owner of that project yet. James is the owner. So what happened? So what I will do here? I will now make a PR here, right, James? So what I need to do, I need to go to this specific uh, like open source repository and go to the PRs. I think a lot of you already have created PRs. And I will also try to create a PR here. New pull request. Now it is asking me uh, like uh, how to create PR. So it is saying base master. And then there is one more master. So I think not, not from here. So I can click on compare across frogs. You can see here, right? Are you all, all following me? Can you please say yes or no so that I know? Okay. okay. So if you're like I am just I just created a new uh, account here for GitHub to check uh, for you all. So you can see here, right? In this, uh, this is my base repository. Love to build your first PR, right? And this is my repository, Om Bharatiya. You can see here, right? I just created this repository after forking it. 
I clicked on it. Now I am able to see the comparison. So the comparison says that I have created one file, and this is the difference, right? This is the difference that I have made. I think it should be very much clear. Okay. So after that, we can make a pull request. So I created this this thing and make this pull request. It says uh, what to tag it. Like what should I uh, give it a name? So it says uh, like let's say I am saying create omvarthi text. So I can have a comment say hey. Oops. First contribution vision to open. So, so I think this is not open source software right now because it is not doing anything but just open source project. So it is saying that allow widgets my maintainer. So let's keep it as it is, and then I will create a pull request. So as you can see, this pull request is already created, and it says that there is no conflict. it has already created a pull request if you will go to this pull request tab in this community project you will see that one pull request is from me as well so these are there are five pull requests already made so so this is how it works i think it should be clear now okay now like uh, james you can follow from here i will like stop share yeah you are sure. uh so uh, i hope you can hear me yeah yeah you can uh, yeah. audible you are audible yeah you are presenting yeah. now can you speak as well as okay so you uh, probably uh, explain uh, everything in fact <laughs> Well, I explain everything to creating the pull request, and yeah, so I guess people are asking how to achieve the same using the terminal. Should we explain that that as well? Uh, creating the same from the terminal. Uh, like uh, yeah, like we can explain this, but let let's mm -hmm. be sure that all the people are already able to do it using. Yeah, people are able to follow. Yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah, so as of now we have just seven pull requests. So. please go ahead and create so if you are already doing or in, in progress well. just heads up here like just let us know that you are doing yet yeah. so that we just know that leave you are, your thoughts in the chat hmm. you mm -hmm. are exactly work. yep yeah priyam is saying let's do it from terminal yeah, okay priyam we will do let's yep. know no no from everyone that they have already completed yeah. let's using wait for Q. others as well mm -hmm. yep you are right jakaria like let's wait for 30 fox guys if you are uh, getting trouble in making a fork of that specific repository let us know we will help you out and that is the reason i also created a new account just to make sure that you guys would be able to follow up. not account basically like I, that is already created but still yeah yeah you can commit to that uh, also in case you have any mm -hmm. yeah so in case you have any confusion regarding the task to be done you can just read through this read me file over here so it say everything regarding how to found the repo how to make changes locally and the task as well and so you can read through to better understand thing okay? yeah so so even if i can explain it again so uh, what you have to do is you have to go to that con contributors folder you have to create a new file with your own name username will uh, will be very much uh, fine whatever username you have create a file with your username make an md file or txt file anything will work and uh, then add anything about your yourself let's say some cool stuff some quotes you follow anything that is that makes you cool 
write it down in that specific file and then make a pr like after committing make a pr just these two or three steps Yeah, Shreya. Shreya is asking, can you share the difference between head and base repository again? Yeah, like uh, the base repository basically is the owner's repository. Let's say from where you forked, okay? That is the base repository where you want to uh, like make a PR, okay? And the head repository is from where you want to make a PR. Let's say, uh, like, let's say you want to go from A to B, then B would be base and A would be head, okay? I think it makes it clear. Am I right, James? Yeah, yeah, sure. Exactly. I guess there's a question regarding, can you also contribute to update the documentation of a particular project? Yeah, for sure. Uh, in fact, how you get started uh, in a couple of projects out there you just start start out by reading the reading the documentation and in case you you come across a typo or something of similar stuff you just create a pull request that's how you get started on that particular project and yeah so you talk to the maintainers and that's how you go forward yep that's how everything works yep i'm checking indra i'm checking your pr one second <clears throat> Yeah, I guess her uh, user handle is Indra Kishore. Uh, yeah, your introduction Indra is already Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you have successfully created a pull request. That's great. Okay. The next step is after you have done with the PRs, uh, like we will tell you about how you can search for open source projects and how you can start doing contributions. You are not required, as we said earlier, you are not required to be very expert in anything. You just are a beginner. So how a beginner can start doing open source contributions that I think uh, like Webhub is, will explain first because James is already speaking a lot now. So Webhub will speak about how we uh, we can start at least as a new by a newbie into open source. And then, like James will ask, also add some lights, and me, I will also add some lights. Uh, like, uh, Vavo, I think you can like uh, explain how anybody can uh, start at least. Like for starters, you need to have a little bit of passion. Uh, like I read some comment by some person, like uh, the code base is very large. Like, what can we do about it? So, like, uh, there is nothing that you can do about it. And you can uh, take help initially from someone from the community, some senior to like understand that part, which you do not understand, but like it will be very difficult for someone to get you started. Right? So what you can do as a new uh, newbie is can I share my screen? Yes. Just open some like get up. Okay, go to here. I'm just search about any language that you write. No. So can you just uh, tell me any language that you want to contribute to? Python. Python, right? So just I'll type Python. So this uh, repo is the algorithms in Python, right? So it just contains data structures over Python. That is like very easy to contribute to, right? And it has some issues, as I can see. Yeah, like uh, Vavo, can you uh, show one example with JavaScript as Harish is also saying, and uh, and with Hacktoberfest. Let's say if the tag is Hacktoberfest, right? So let's let's say in October month they can start doing PRs for that specific thing and after 4 PR they are eligible for to get a t-shirt right okay so suppose it is October fetch so what we'll do is we we'll go to like github we'll just open a community suppose this is community that I run 
uh, so i'll go to this and i'll search for issues that have uh, october fest title right so currently like uh, i have not opened the issues any issue that has the title so what i can do is i'll just open this i'll like this you don't have to do this will be done already so there's something called as labels you can do right uh color is to to is it available so what i'll do is i'll go to any org i'll open any repo and i'll search for this label right good and like the issue is very easy also like uh, when you select first option is in blue in case takes the front color and the last selected option in the community color drop down okay so like the colors are wrong right can you see hello yeah yeah we can see yeah, we can see so like this is a very easy task in which the colors are wrong right? just so i'll just search where this is and i'll send a pull request like was this too abstract no no we it is fine like it was just about how you we can search out about it you are saying that how you can contribute is you can start contributing that was actually more than that but still it was good like for uh, javascript like, i think there is no problem like thousands of repos are there right correct okay like the next thing is that how you can start contributing let me take some more light over it like when you think you can start contributing so see there are a lot of projects let's say in the python as well in javascript as well there will be a lot of projects like huge number of projects for these two languages and c++ and uh, cl like cpp everything uh, java everything you have a lot of project that is open source already how you can start contributing into open source is let's say there are few projects which are libraries okay which are libraries and they need some demo as well in that space in their documentation you could not find a demo okay you could not find a demo and you are already using that library so can't you create a small project just a small project for demo purpose and you can submit that as a pr there like you can you can create your own project create examples folder put your own example or demo project into the examples folder and make a pr explaining what you did you can even deploy your project somewhere let's say if it is a small project you can deploy it you on um, any uh, like uh, on netify netify or anything uh, you can deploy right firebase also if it is back end so you can deploy and once you have already deployed that project then you can make it as a pr and say that this is a demo project for a specific library it is one very good contribution i'm saying other contribution if you are not sure if you can contribute to their own uh, code then you can uh, like at least make their documentation code let's say they ha they have some documentations written and you see that this, this is very less to explain something you then you can make some more detailed documentation and push it to the same uh, same uh, repository this is how you can start it up there are people who just uh, like uh, do spelling corrections and then make prs that are also valid if you see some spelling mistakes you can make a pr and then push it up like then uh, then the owner will like merge your pr to the original branch who will be the owner who will be merging there are a lot of maintainers of that specific project who are actually working for the community they have the responsibility to take your uh, review your code if it if it is looking fine and if it, if it is uh, like adding some value to the project they will merge it they will never stop it to merge okay 
so this is how you can start by correcting any spelling mistakes by correcting colors as weber was showing by adding some demo projects this is how you can start and once you start once you get uh, got a star, like got to start it you can now start applying some more like intelligence or your more um, uh, skills over that specific technology or uh, library you can even add some more features into that enhancement as, uh, or bug fixes all you can do just checking the issues tab so i think you have like uh, we have already shown the issues tab in the issues tab people come and put some issues that this is the issue or this is enhancement that is required and if there are some issues then you can start contributing that to that specific issue i think it answers a lot of question yeah thanks guys yeah i think it is uh, good so uh, like is anyone still stuck to make a pr uh or we can move further yeah like uh, james has actually sh shared one specific repository where which, which says all about how to start your first contribution or how to solve your is any issue okay so this is a uh, good to go mm. <clears throat> and uh, yeah like somebody was saying that how to make a pr using cli right do we have time to do that i think like if you have like guys we don't have much time enough left so if you have some questions let's ask those questions in the last two minutes and then we will try to wrap it up okay yeah sure sounds good dakshita we will share you the recordings in the group or community group itself so you can join it i think links are already shared above you will see the chat and uh, we can we will share the recordings there no worries if you have missed it yeah like if is there any question that you want to uh, do here we have really good mentors for gsoc if you want to ask some question for gsoc how to apply next year anything yeah like this question will always be there right webho uh, and james like how to start or apply for gsoc like i think J james has already also worked on gulf script right so you can also yeah. say that there yeah. are other other communities as well yeah. which yeah. In which you can part yeah yes indeed mm -hmm. yeah so in fact there are there are a, uh, a plenty of uh, things that go by uh, this thing called gsoc uh so in in case you're not selected for gsoc don't be d d disappointed there are still many uh projects so those, those sort of events that go by the d d kind of like that is being conducted like gsoc so uh there is this uh an initiative by girls Script foundation called girls Script summer of code i shall just share the link right away in the chat just a minute okay so uh to take part in GSSOC is uh, not much complicated. You just have to uh, apply, and you can participate as a student, mentor, or as a project admin. Uh, and yeah, so I just have shared the link on the chat. And still, there are uh, plenty of programs that resembles these of out there. And you only have to do is just search for something similar. And yeah, so uh, I guess that's happening by the time of um, March. I guess yeah. That's for uh, the, the regarding that time period. Yeah. So uh, and as Om said regarding getting to GSOC, uh, so it is always good to start much earlier. So uh, yeah. So that gives you the time to get to know your project better, your mentors, and yeah. So it's always good to start earlier. Uh, just uh, just come to the website for for Google Summer of Code, just see the available organizations and projects that are participating this year and just get in touch with them. And that's how you get to more, get to know more about the project, the maintainers, and, and the community is always, always very welcoming to contributors. And yeah, so that's how everything goes by. So all you have to do is that just try to re reach out. And yeah, so, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess I was able to wrap it up. 
yeah so uh, i have just shared the link in the chat as well just one more question uh, yeah. one more question mm -hmm. was there from pratham pratham that mm -hmm. uh, he was yeah. asking that if we contribute anything to a specific github organization mm -hmm. or project and uh, mm -hmm. do we can we put it into resume and saying that hey i am a contributor and then this and that so like yeah pratham yes. see if you have done some really good contributions uh -huh into the project then you can put it into your resume let's say if you have created a nice demo that you can uh, show let's say there is a graph library called graph uh, chart.js right and you have added some really good demo uh, of a dashboard that uses that chart.js and it is already merged into that specific thing then you can say hey like i have contributed uh, like to this specific project and here is my demo available as well so i'm just giving an example even you can enhance a feature like let's say you have created a new type type of uh, chart and you have you have actually made a pull request then also you can add it so what i'm trying to say if the quality of that pr of the quality of that contribution is good then you can add otherwise what will happen you can add into your resume but interviewer will, will ask right what you did you do then you will say that i have corrected the uh, like a spelling mistake then it will not be good right interview experience will also get worse so uh, let's try to get into open source but if you want to put it into resume then try to do some really good contributions but everything is start for, by the first step so the first step is to make a contribution the next step would be to do better contributions right that's what <clears throat> can the mentors share their gsoc experience like what were the files in there okay yeah like we can share i think uh, like we have, we have very less time left so we will try to share that like uh, i think one minute in one minute we will try to share like uh, wherever when you applied for gsoc what were your qualification that time what did you show up in the application right i guess uh, james should answer that right <laughs> uh yeah so when it comes to my case uh, i i haven't been a student to be honest i i have just been a mentor for this year so this is actually my very first year with, with gsoc and that being a mentor so i started contributing to the project with back uh, and the maintainers actually reached out to me saying that there is actually a uh, so we would like to have you as a mentor and that's how i got into gsoc yeah so i haven't been a student so i guess well, why you can answer that question better cool cool, cool. so like when yeah. i applied i had done like most of something called as free code camp it is a site for like learning web development so i knew basics of javascript okay uh, and uh, i started coding in python so i knew python and i did competitive programming in c++ so i knew all the three things that you require and most of the stack is python javascript or uh, kernel based is c++ right so like i had a strong very strong foundation before like joining any of the projects so all i needed to do was uh, just uh, take up any project and read uh, it uh, try to understand it code base like i think that was the most difficult part of gsoc uh, like i can show you like uh, like nothing comes in easy i might have some tabs here right if i share my screen i'll show you one second so before gsoc i had to like go through a lot of projects of different organizations so so these are all the organization and these are all the projects and the uh, most of them right i went through each and every organization that i felt was good and i tried to study it code base uh, so this took me for, uh, you can say like 3 months to do to do that uh, like oh, thank you <laughs> like uh, hello can you hear me like i uh, <laughs> i just read about each and every organization and try to understand it code base like like this is one folder so 
you are like so i must say this is the hardest way okay i must say this is the hardest way you do not need to go through all the projects but vaibha was very much curious to go to all the projects you can just go through the interested you if you are interested in python just go through the python projects and see what uh, like what is uh, what is something that you can contribute you don't need to go to all but still yeah this is also one best way like it will be one best way to see that where you uh, like uh, where you can see yourself right right vaibha so did you read the docs of all the software i mean the software that you were going to contribute to and stuff like that uh, like Or, i uh, i guess uh, like uh, there are two types of people like uh, like a lot of people want to do things like and they do not need want to put in effort right and they are uh, they are uh, they have a little bit of casual attitude like they will apply and they will be like ho gaya to sahi hai nahi hua to koi baat nahi types so yeah. so like uh, i do not like those people like i like to be very prepared wherever i go and so like i had to do this uh, and like i was uh, not from a very good college so like uh, uh, people were getting internships in my college but i do not have uh, had any references or anyone working in any company so like i had to do it like and at that time i had no second chances so what i did was i opened the google site and i saw all the projects that were there and i tried to understand each one every one of them right but like uh, as i was in like second or third year so uh, the projects were very hard and it took me like 3 months to do that while doing it uh, like i could see some like uh, coding mistakes and stuff uh, wrong doings or you can say <laughs> spelling mistakes in readme also so uh, like i used to send those pull requests that's it oh, this is like how he is started it is like 2% of uh, it is 2% of like other people telling you what you have to do i think uh, james also notes very well that uh, like when you are coding you have to just search and you have to devote time like for competitive programming i know people in like colleges they like do it for like every day 4 hours 5 hours every long challenge short challenge right so similar yeah. if you want to do open source and you want to do it at a level like which is of gsoc mhl and anything else so you need to like uh, devote some time yeah okay thank you thank you so much okay it is not like what should i do to get gsoc <laughs> okay so like that is a very wrong question yeah yeah good Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that is really good explanation, Vavo. Is there any more questions? How did you judge a company as good or bad? Okay. Good. Not bad. As good. We are code base or something else. How do do you judge a company? Like uh, company. I think this question is little like, uh, like not correct. Right, but I mean, I'll be frank. Like who am I to judge a company? So like maybe maybe he's saying about project. Maybe like I think he might be asking about a project. When you start thinking about a project, when you think that it is a good project to contribute or something, we are code base or something else. Like that is what he's trying to say, I guess. Yeah. I guess yeah. I would go with intuition. Like if you like do competitive, uh, so like you get the flow of things, right? And if you do a little bit of development, huh? and if you do a little bit of development you know how like router works how like what is the flow of code then uh, judging code base is not judging code base it is like judging your ability to understand that code base right 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 uh yeah like is there any more question i think there is no other questions uh, like mostly most of them are already answered if you if we are missing any question please guys uh, post it again i think uh, we have already uh, like answered most of the questions and uh, we will try to wrap it up because uh, it is 4:30 yeah no questions anymore uh, thanks a lot guys i will also tell you all that uh, we will be doing more of these things we will be doing let's say in the october fest as well we will try to do one more Uh, one more uh, like uh, um, like session where we will try to do some prs or help you with some projects uh, where you can contribute 
and other than that we can also help you with uh, development and all this stuff uh, i think i'm also talking with some institutes uh, academies like say scalar academy and then progate academy and these these academies to at least have some like free workshops for starting few things so like we will talk to them and then try to get few things uh, in this uh, here and thanks all for joining and then making it all make uh, like sense and adding more value and thanks james and vavo to join us and uh, like uh, really give good information and and line guidance for people i think i will also add you into the group so that if somebody asks some questions i have one group of like uh, of all these people like who actually can like uh, yeah sure so many so yeah, for sure. and uh, maybe you can sometimes if you are free you can answer few of these questions right one okay. small thing i didn't scare you like <laughs> by showing a lot of folders right okay okay I... <laughs> no, no, no. are you sure okay it is in recording now you can do nothing <laughs> thanks a lot guys yeah it was a really fun thing so like it depends uh, like how much effort you can put and uh, like i know that james had put has put a lot of effort right i yeah, i think 100 100 uh, organizations he has contributed and most of them are not very good but at least he has contributed to 8 10 plus uh, like uh, repositories where the contribution was like uh, appreciable so like it is not like all of them you will good do good but for 10 also like james has done really well so that thing i think can he can add in the uh, projects he can add in so the portfolio box right and lots of contributions were there right? yeah he has done a lot of contribution yeah thanks for guys thanks guys thank you. yeah thanks yeah. for joining yeah we will uh, like i am dropping off i have a meeting now okay yeah 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 thanks a lot yeah thank you uh, i think uh, yeah